Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today, um, by request, I thought I'd show you a quick version of how I made a uh, finger quote painting with stamps from Stampscape. So here's a photograph of the long version, and here's a photograph of the quick version, which still took, you know, a good 30 minutes, but really if you take your time, you're gonna get a better outcome. So the way that I did it is I selected a background that spoke to me. So I make backgrounds in my boredom and or like before work where I don't have to really focus. I can just have fun. And uh, the background I selected for this one just spoke to me for that picture. So I'm going to find something similar and you find something that works for you or make one. Um but I want it to not be too dark because I'm going to have to stamp on it. And I think, I think I'm going to go with this one. In hindsight, probably wasn't the best choice, but, um, you know, I like the colors on it, so I picked it. So I'm going to put my other backgrounds away here. And then what I want to do is first cut this thing down uh, so that it's going to be four by five and a quarter because the treatments that I'm going to be doing to it, I don't want to have to trim later. So I'm going to take just a little bit off the bottom and a little bit off one of the sides to decide which side I'm willing to sacrifice here. And I'm going to sacrifice this darker side and not that much. I still get some of that darkness and, and I really end up liking that, that portion of it. I just wasn't crazy about this sort of greenish blue. And this was done with um, ink and oxide sprays. So I want to lighten up the middle here. And the ink has pretty much set, but you can still lighten it some. So I'm just going to take a paper towel and I'm going to get it wet. And what I'll do is I'll just go in where I think I want the lighter area to be. And I'm just going to start lifting that color. And it, it doesn't lift as much as I wish it would, uh, but it does lift enough to be able to put a lighter color in because I'll be using my pan pastels to make my sunrise lightness. So I'm just gonna keep lifting as much as I can off of here. And again, you don't have to lift it all and it doesn't have to be a perfect circle um, because you're Sunrise isn't going to be a perfect circle really either. And I do want to dry that really well because I'm going to be putting pan pastel on top of it and I don't want it to be wet at all. But yes, you can stamp over pan pastels. And um, in this video, I'll be using the same thing I used, which are my pan pastels and my uh, pastel pencils and some of my Posca pens and some varied kinds of inks and brushes, just all kinds of media there. <laughs> so I'm gonna go in first with my pan pastels and I'm gonna start with the white because I really wanna lighten out that area. And I've got these little, uh, sort of, they're sort of like makeup daubers. And I like to get a piece of paper to dab off onto, so I'm gonna grab a piece of paper and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of tamp that off and then I'm just going to fill in that area with the white. And it's not going to be white, I'm just trying to get it as light as I possibly can. So I just keep dabbing the white in until I get it as light as I can. And then I want to blend in some yellow. So I'll go down to my yellow. And I, I just learned that you could screw these onto each other and you don't have to have that big old pot thing that holds them all, which is very helpful. And then I'm gonna dab in some yellow so I can get the colors that I want. Okay, so now I'm just gonna kind of spread that yellow out some, dab it off and then kind of rub it back in. So now we've got our nice yellow color going on here. I can go ahead and put these away for now. They'll be back later. And I decide that it's a little too yellow, so I'm gonna wipe off some of that yellow. I'm gonna go back in with the white and just tap in a little bit of white. 
So this is what, what I'm talking about when I said, you know, it's important when you choose your background that it speaks to you of what the picture is in your mind. So I just spread that out some. That's better. I like that a little bit better. Just gives a little bit more light. Just overall, I think that what I chose here was just too dark. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my Stampscape stamp set out. I'm going to get my, uh, wipe my hand off, of course. I'm going to get my little Misty tool. And I'm going to uh, stick this down. And I realize later that, oh, I hate it when those magnets get stuck together. They're so hard to pull apart. Um, I need this to go up to, towards the top. And I'm not really terribly worried about it sticking. The red rubber stamps are great about not sticking to your project and lifting it, um, whereas the other ones do. So this is the um, Country Chapel small set from Stampscapes. And what I'm taking is the basically the road and the hillside and deciding where I want it to go. And I'm finding that little crevice in the between the little hillsides and I want that to be kind of centered where the sun is and I realized that I forgot to take out the uh, mouse pad here and it's just going to be too tight so I just take out the mouse pad and then I'm going to reposition my magnets and my stamp there we go and I, I do want it to be even so I'd check the bottom for even spacing and at first I decided to stamp it with the verdant or verdant or however you say it in the um, Versafine Claire and it ends up being too light. I can't see it well enough to fill it in, but I don't want it to be so dark either. So we'll test that, see how it goes. If it doesn't work out, I'm gonna go in with Shady Lane. So I really can't see it well enough to define it in certain spots. I can see the hillsides at the top and those are good, but not good enough. So I'm gonna spend a few minutes hunting for something that's right under my nose, which is the Shady Lane in, in the Versafine Claire. Um, and it, it ends up working out pretty good. So again, with this one, it's not exactly like the other one because the background's different. There it is. Yep, it was right in front of my nose and I couldn't see it. So I'm not even going to wipe off the stamp. I'm just going to go in with the other color. And I'm going to stamp it down. These stamps are amazing, okay? They're great stamps. I mean, you, they're the art. You're just the colorer. <laughs> And honestly, you don't even have to color some of these. You can just do them in black and white. So now I can see my road defined and everything's nice and defined. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that stamp away. I don't know what, oh yeah, I'm picking out the little trees set. And I'm gonna be putting multiple trees on here. I'm gonna take this out of here because I'm gonna hand stamp those on because I do need to kind of sort of mask with the paper towels um, so that I can be selective about where I'm putting these trees. And I'm gonna go in here with the rainforest. Oh no, that's the Shady Lane. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. I'm gonna go in with the Shady Lane and I'm gonna kind of fill in these hillsides just roughly and nothing real spectacularly fancy. And I'm just using my Lavinia brush for this. And the big areas I'm going to do with the big brush, and then I'm going to go into the small areas with a smaller brush. I'm just trying to get a little bit of color down. A lot of that's going to be covered up. I'll be using my pastel pencils and things like that, but I want to get the majority of the color on there. And I'm looking for, I am looking for, oh yeah. I'm going to go and grab some of my Lavinia inks because I want to use the olive color. And I end up only using the olive color, but I'm not, you know, I'm never sure what I'm going to use. It's, it's a matter of kind of what, whatever feeling hits me, but I'm going to go in with the Lavinia olive and use a smaller brush. 
I'm going to go ahead and hit the bottom here a little bit in the sides. I want these to be just a wee bit darker. So this is a little bit darker than Shady Lane, but it isn't as dark as the um, rainforest. So I'll go ahead and get the tops of the hills here with a smaller brush. And the color doesn't need to be even, nothing. It, I mean, seriously, this couldn't be easier. Go ahead and get just this top of this hill. Try not to hit the little road because I'm, you know, I want it to stay a road. And just to do fill in a little bit of the bottom here because it doesn't the stamp doesn't didn't go all the way to the bottom. So I'm just gonna fill it in by hand with the olive and make it pretty dark because it's closer to us. And the same with the other side. Okay, so we're kind of we're kind of getting close. I'm just kind of looking at placement of my trees and stuff, deciding where I want to put trees. So I'm gonna get my trees and I'm gonna put them on a stamping block on a um, on acrylic block. I get my piece of paper towel. I'm just gonna tear it so it's got a soft edge to it. Because if you leave the harsh edge, sometimes it, the stamping doesn't quite work out as well. And I'm going to go in here with the rainforest, and I'm going to start stamping out my trees. I have to decide where I want them. And I decide that I want some up over there because it, kind of there's a one area there that looks like it could be a fall tree already poking in. You know, if you're doing impressionistic art, which kind of this is, sort of, kind of. So I've covered up the road and I'm only going to stamp basically the top part of the stamp and I'm just going to make sure my road's covered but nothing else and I'm going to just press down and let that kind of soak into the paper. Okay, happy with those right there. And I'm going to decide where I want to put some more trees because I definitely want more than just two trees. And I want some down here at the forefront, in the foreground, I should say. And these ones don't really end up showing up that well, so I end up going in with some black. Because it's already kind of on a dark ink, so it's very hard, hard to see them. And that would be okay. It's not a problem with that. I'm gonna add another one, little one over here off to the side. And then I want, I want trees down in the very foreground on the right too. But I'm gonna go in with the black because it's already very dark there. You, you're not gonna be able to see that green. So I'm looking for my black that's buried here somewhere. You guys have seen the state of my desk, so this is the only clear area on my desk. And first I think I'm gonna mask that off before I stamp the trees, but then I change my mind because I don't think I really need to. It's okay if I cover part of that road. So I'm just gonna get my black ink on and I'm just gonna stamp my trees straight down. There's some good filler stamps in here too that you could use, but see the black just kind of works out there because it's already in a dark area. So I'm just kind of lining that portion of the image with the black. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a black tree over here too. So it looks like it's closer and then the other trees are maybe a little bit more in the distance. I'm just going to lay down my paper towel and press down my stamp. There you can kind of see those a little better. Now I want to put some trees way off in the distance. So I'm going to just stamp off onto my paper towel. And I'm going to grab the shady lane again because it's a much lighter shade of green. So it'll make the trees look farther away. And I'm just going to cover, I'm just going to mask off the top part of that hill. Have to, sometimes you have to 
you know, artistically finagle your paper towel so that it fits where you need it to fit. <laughs> these are the best technical tools. And I learned these from Kevin at, at Stampscapes anyway. he That's his main method of masking and it's brilliant. So if I stamp with the Shady Lane and I'm gonna stamp off with the uh, secondary, it looks like the trees are farther away. So I'm happy with that. <sighs> I don't even know what I'm telling you there. I forgot. It was something. I don't know what. Oh yeah, it looks like I'm gonna go in with another tree off to the side with the Shady Lane. Yeah, I want one just uh, off, just further here in the distance, another distant one. There we go. Just kind of make them look like they're farther back away from the hills. So I'm going to put away my ink for now. And what I want to do is I want to get this nice and dry because I'm going to be working with my pastels, uh, my pastel pencils. So, and I want that heat set because they, you know, they act really funny over wet ink. I've learned, trust me, I've learned. Okay, now that that's nice and dry, I'm going to start out with these, this um, all pencil and my charcoal, my charcoal pencil. It's just a general and the Stabilo, it's a Stabilo all and it's black. And then I'll be using the Carbothello uh, Stabilo chalk pastel pencils. And I'm gonna start with my little black pencil. I'm gonna sharpen it because you know, I'm gonna be making some sort of fine lines. You could probably do this with a pen as well or any other kind of pencil for that matter. But I like this one because it's nice and black and it cut. Basically, you can draw on anything with it. So I'm gonna give that a sharpen and I'm gonna sharpen my charcoal, but not too much, just a little. And I'm gonna start with my charcoal. I'm just gonna deepen the edges there. And you will get dirty doing this if you're anything like me. I don't use those stub things, I just use my fingers. Now I know that the stub things in some cases are a little better because you know there's no oils on them, like oils from your fingers, but I don't know where I put mine and my fingers are just fine. I'm happy with them. So all I'm trying to do is just draw like little squiggly sort of lines in here just to deepen up the, the or define basically the road a little bit better. And you hear Duke in the background. Mike must be feeding the dogs because Duke is very greedy. So I want to take my other pencil and I want to draw like little, yeah, like little kind of, I don't know, bushes, grass, tr trees, twigs, whatever. And you could honestly, you could use stamps for this as well, but I rather enjoy drawing them in. And then I want to darken down these trees a little bit so you can see them a little bit better. Give them a little bit more definition. And trust me when I say I'm just scribbling on these. You really would want to kind of take your time and not break your pencil. But since I'm making a video here, I did not want to spend a whole lot of time. Just want to kind of give you the idea how it was done and then let you go from there. Okay, hopefully that doesn't break. I am not horribly experienced at pencils at all. Like, I just got these. So, you know, I'm learning how, how to sharpen them. I mean, I know how to sharpen a number two pencil, but these pencils are special. <laughs> so, I have to treat them so. Um, and here you can just see me making these little, I don't know, sticks and bushes and I don't know, stuff. Doesn't have a name, it's just stuff that's growing alongside the road that's darker than everything else. And I do it all along the road. And I'm trying to, you know, 
garner some depth here so <clears throat> so the road doesn't look flat. So I'm going to go in my little hillside with my little brown pencil and just start putting color down. And there's not any real rhyme or reason to my coloring here except for to just add more depth and dimension and color. Uh, you know, frankly, I like color. That's my name, right? Not afraid of color. So I just go in and start throwing in brown, and this is a lighter brown. And I have ordered more pencils, by the way, because my color, those colors are pretty true. They're kind of hard to mix and blend to get another color, like a darker green or something like that. So I'm just kind of defining edges and rubbing it in so that it's not just one flat color, it's multiple like like you would see in the fall, at least the fall in Alabama, like everything starts to turn brown, including our grass. But when it's turning brown and it's still got green, it's pretty cool. And then I'm gonna just go in and kind of define these little trees a little bit better too, because they're kind of disappearing as the ink dried. They kind of faded off into the background, so. Again, this is pretty scribbly, and I am blending it out as well because I'm just looking for darker and just a little bit more definition, but not like stamped definition. This just kind of helps them to stand out a little better. And then just adding more kind of woodsy, woodsy debris, that's what I'll call it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to call it. <laughs> Stuff. Just kind of bringing everything kind of in closer. And now that I'm looking at it, I think what I did there was actually make it a little bit, look a little bit more flat. So now I'm just throwing down color to kind of deepen that. And I'm going to throw down some red too. Why not? kind of give it a more uh, deeper feel as if those are in deeper grass or um, other woodsy type stuff. So then I'm going to go in with the brown again and I'm going to just kind of define the edges of the mountainside here. Or hill, I guess it's a hillside. I don't know. Yeah, it's a hillside. And I'm going to go in with a little orange and bring in some color to my sunrise. It doesn't really end up showing up very well. I mean, it shows up, but it's because of the background color, it looks more purple than anything. So I'm going to go in with yellow and try and get that purpley feel out of there because I don't, I do want parts of it to be purple, just not that part. And it's okay that I'm spreading that down onto the hillside because that's kind of how the light would spill over in my in my trip down the lane. It's how it would anyway. And just define that edge a little bit and then go back in and bring back a shadow. And just bring back a little bit more shading here, but not dark shading, just light shading. And a little bit of color here. So as you can see, it's the basically is just adding color and moving it around. And I still need more over here. I'm just not happy with that spot right there. Let's grab the black one and just kind of define that little portion of the road there. I'm just going to deepen down this little, this little corner. Bring in some more twig, twig action. And just kind of define these forefront trees a little bit better too. Okay, 
Let's see here. What do I want to do? Okay, I'm going to go in with the with the yellow here again on the pan pastel because it's a little bit denser of color when you put it down. And I end up, what I'm trying to do is just lighten up that back a little bit more. But I end up really hating it. And getting a phone call. <laughs> and so... I try and fix it, but I'm just not happy with it. So I'm going to grab my eraser and I'm going to erase it. Because it just did not make me happy. And I just realized I'm using the wrong side of the eraser, so it's not erasing, it's just making weird marks. But uh, this stuff erases really well with this. I don't know what this eraser, it's some weird rubber. So. Just gonna erase all that off and start over and just go down in the very bottom here and I'm gonna bring up my yellow I'm just gonna dab it in just along the hillside there as if light were hitting it just like you would normally see anytime you are driving into the east here I'm going to go in a little bit heavier on the yellow. See, I should have picked something lighter. That's the main issue is it's dark. I'm just going to try and blend that in. Erase off where it went where I didn't want it to go. And you would think that I should leave that alone now. <laughs> Keep messing it. It's like giving yourself or somebody a haircut when you're not experienced. A little off this side, a little off that side. Pretty soon they've got a mohair haircut. <laughs> so <laughs> what I want to do now is I want to bring in some fall color here. And so I'm going to be using my Posca pens. And I'm just going to be creating some little dots. I'm going to start with orange. Just do some dots here and there as if they were leaves, you know, coloring leaves peeking through. I'm just going to do multiple colors. I'm going to go with the orange, and I'm going to go with the peach. Just give it a shake and give it a few dots. And don't worry if they seem kind of bright, because I am going to dull them down a bit. But I want to get them down first. I'm going to go in with the yellow. I'm just, I don't know, just dot in where places, I don't know, randomly. <laughs> um, again, I'm not a trained artist. I have no idea what you're supposed to do. I just do what other people do and what kind of looks good to me. See, that's a little bit too springtimey, but I'm going to come in with this sort of a, it's not really purple but I don't know I guess it's kind of a wine color and I'm gonna lay color right over the top of those I'm gonna make sure color is actually coming out here because it seems a little watery so I probably should have shaken it up a little bit better but as you see I'm dotting this in pretty heavy you know compared to the other colors and I'm dotting it over the other colors and it's just in throughout the trees just to bring in that little fall vibe. Okay. Happy with that so far. I want it to kind of dry because I'm going to do other stuff. And do want to kind of darken up my road there a little bit um, give it a little bit more color so I'm gonna go in with the dark brown or the sienna pencil and I'm just gonna be lightly like laying the pencil on the side and just defining that edge a little bit and then smearing it in just kind of darken that down on that side and I definitely want to darken it down some on this side. 
because it's kind of in a shaded area. And define along this edge here again. This edge right here I'm, I'm not been happy with and I don't think I end up being happy with it at all. But I'm committed now to showing you how it's done so I'm just going to do it. And I'm just making like little little blade, blades of shadowy uh, twigginess grass, whatever. And those are, they're feeling dry. I don't want to smear them around. At first I try and go in with my green pencil, but it really, the shade of green is too light. You can't really even see it. So it's not working the way I would have hoped. I need a nice deep forest green one. I think I ordered one. I know I ordered six or seven more pencils. I could do with a huge, huge set of these. I love them. Okay, so. I'm going to go in, and I'm just with the ink that's already on that brush, and I'm just going to swipe to kind of dull down those colors. Just a little bit. And they'll dope down some more when I do the edging. And they do tend to kind of dry into the picture. So you see, this one is much brighter in color than the other one was because of the background that I chose. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get my pencils out of my way. I'm gonna grab the shady lane. I don't know why. Oh, yeah, I want to add another couple of trees here. Or kind of deepen down the trees I have. And then, you know, make those little bright colors that are in the background kind of bury them a little bit. And that just gives me more definition on my trees. Try and get some more over here to show up because it's very dark there. And that's just not really showing up very well at all. I need to show it better. I think I'm going to need to go in with black again. Okay, so... Um, what I'm looking at here is looking for a way to kind of dull down this brightness at the top. So I'm just kind of going over with the light brown pencil and blending in. It doesn't really, I don't feel like it does the trick. So you'll see in a minute, I'm gonna try something else. I'm a little happier with that. It's still just too bright, wrong shades of color. I'd throw maybe throw a little red in here and see if that makes a difference. And the red I actually kind of like, but it still it just doesn't do the job. I mean, it is starting to look like a maybe a a morning after a storm or something. I don't know. It's just not. It just doesn't cut it there. It's not cutting it. You try a little bit of yellow here around the area of where the sun was again. I'm trying to find that and hide some of that background again. I'm just going to rub upward on it. I don't know, maybe some white. Let's grab the white pencil. So, you know, I mean, we're learning together here. You know, sometimes you do a project and it just comes out perfect and you try to repeat that and it just doesn't, I don't know. It's like, maybe I should have recorded what I did in the first place. But I still, I know it's because of the background that I chose. 
So I'm just kind of filling that in again, just trying to lighten up that area. And then I'm just going to push that lightness out. Now these blend easier than the pan pastels. So yeah, it's closer. It's still not as light, but it's closer. Let's get this one and then compare it to this one. This one's just a little more colorful and that one has plenty of color in it too, but I'm still not happy with the top of that sky. So what am I gonna do? What should I do about it? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna grab an oxide because we know that oxides will soften down a color. And what I'm looking for is my antique linen. I'm gonna grab my antique linen and I'm gonna grab a brush. I hope you guys are enjoying my learning process here. <laughs> um, experimentation, whatever. And see the antique linen does calm down that color quite, quite a bit. I mean, not 100%, but it does kind of help it blend together and settle down a little bit. It also kind of lightens up the sky. That's a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy with that. That's much better. A little bit lighter up here. Oxides are an amazing thing. <laughs> I don't have any white oxide, and I don't think I would have gone in with white anyway. I prefer, you know, the kind of a yellowy tone to it. So it does definitely look like the sun is shining through there. Let me go ahead and just re-add some shadows here where I got some white. get brown in there. <clears throat> I've seen people do paintings, watercolor paintings and stuff like that, and they never use one. They, I'm always surprised when I see them slap blue in something where you would never expect blue and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, and then they do it and it works really well. So why not try? I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more de definition to that hill or that bend because it is kind of going uphill, so I want it to just kind of add some, maybe little shadows where the trees are. Darken the road there a bit, or the path. I guess in the, the, our case, it's a path. There's no cars on it. It doesn't look wide enough for a car. It's just a little shady path. And I mean, the entire picture, it does show a couple walking up to the chapel. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna edge this with the uh, Lavinia in the olive. And you'd be surprised what this ink does because you would think when you blend olive over these colors, it's gonna look horrible. But it really looks really pretty, I, I don't know how that works, but it works. It actually, and it's the Lavinia's are a dye ink. It actually kind of goes up brown, which is what I'm looking for, but it still stays green too in some spots. So that's just gonna bring in the focal point there, which is basically the sunny path, the walk to headed east to the chapel over the hill in my case. So I'm just gonna wipe off my mess and there we have it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I thank you for watching. Uh, there's the two pictures side by side. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you'd like to see more and hit that notification bell so you can get notified every time I upload a video. Thanks so much for watching. Have an awesome day.